It doesn't matter how good your art skills are if you can't formulate a good design. When it comes to customizing sneakers, it is imperative that you have a solid plan laid out for exactly what you're hoping to accomplish. Otherwise, you'll run into all sorts of problems down the line. You could do this by sketching out a plan on a piece of paper, but what I like to do is create a digital design and pitch this to the client with my prospective price to show them what they're really paying for. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my creative design process and how I do things to come up with excellent designs that can easily be followed throughout the entirety of my project. In short, this is how I create my mock-ups. But before we get started, we need a project. Going to visit my friend Hillary. Hey Hillary. Oh, hey. Hey. So you know how I customize shoes, right? Yes. So if you could have any pair of custom shoes, what would you get? What do you mean? What? Me? Oh, do you have them with Hello? you? Yeah. Oh, wow, those are so cool. Come, let's go film my friend Cheryl. Hey, this is my friend Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. So, you know that I customize sneakers, right? Yeah. If you want to get any pair of custom sneakers done, what would you do? Um, my favorite costume is um, Adventure Time. Oh, Adventure Time. Yeah. Do you have any favorite characters? Beamer. Oh, Jack and Finn together. Lady Rainicorn. What about Lumpus Space Princess? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's always awesome. She's always awesome. Okay, this might seem super obvious, but the first thing I like to do is create a folder with the title of the project that I use to dump absolutely anything and everything that I'm going to be using on this project in this folder. That means going onto Google and finding image results that are suitable to use as references. I will just take these images and pop them into my folder. So if you're not familiar with Adventure Time, Adventure Time is a really crazy, not kid show. As you can see, there are a couple of really weird psycho adult themes in this show, but it has really, really good characters, really good world, and just a beautiful and vibrant experience. So going into this design, there are so many characters that I could put on this shoe that could really work, but, my fear is that there are so many different characters with so many different colors that they're not going to work in harmony. But after reviewing the images, I decided to go with this awesome image and this awesome image because they have such a good similarity in terms of color schemes. The next step is to hop over to angelusdirect.com and head over to the FAQ section, little drop down and click on shoe mockup. What you'll find down here is a couple of different shoe mockup options for different types of sneakers. We're gonna click on the Air Force One and you will have this really cool template that you could use to conveniently create shoe mockups. Why it's so cool is that every single one of these layers can be used to select an individual portion of the shoe. If I hold down the control key on my keyboard and then select the little window here on heel portion, you'll notice that it selects little marching ants appear around the heel portion. Then I can take my brush and it'll only apply the effect inside that area. I can go ahead and I can select a different color for the middle portion. The same can be said for the remainder of the shoe. This is just so much quicker than manually selecting each of those areas as you go. So next step is I'm gonna click and drag and drop the main image that I want to put on this shoe into this project. And as you can see, it is a little bit too big for the shoe. Because it's above the shoe, I have no idea what the right sizing is for the correct placement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to the right hand side here, and I'm gonna drop the opacity of this image so that I can see the shoe on the layer below so that I can position it in a more effective place. And then once I'm happy with it, I can increase that opacity again and I'll have a full on image in the right position exactly where I want it to be. So what I wanna do now is I want to remove all the areas of this image that are not where I want paint to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the heel tab, the middle portion, the upper, the swoosh and the outer toe box that's that we want to go for the outer toe box we want the toe box part to stay white the second upper which i call the laces tab if everything that we want to have paint on it is now selected so what we want to do is we want to exclude everything that is not in the selection and we can do that by heading to select and saying inverse or you could press ctrl shift and i then simply going to hit the delete tab 
then we can erase everything that is now outside that is now selected but I'm just gonna hit the delete button and it is all gone now we've got some sort of cropping issues here where we've got our little worm and some clouds what I'm going to use is the pen tool and I'm going to make a selection and get rid of all of those things in there because I'm going to repaint those areas now so selecting the outer toe box and a little bit of blue I'm going to create some blue sky in that area but unfortunately here I am I'm busy painting on top of the tree what I want is to create a new layer and then I will put that underneath the tree uh, so that I don't have any images or any issues of painting over the, the image that we're using. So no, there we go, wrong orientation, there we go. Now it's underneath the tree and I can sit, I can paint all over that area with the brush. Also I seem to have cut this cloud in half a little bit so I'm going to select that sort of grey white on the upper section. I'm going to select that grey white and I am going to repaint it. I'm going to grab the white as well just sort of fix that area and I'm going to grab that dark gray and just make sure that those lines uh, there are the right color the right size yeah that's about right I'll remove that I'll add those gray lines and I'll just add a little bit of blue sky at the bottom there so it looks a little bit more natural then at the top here just above the snail I'm going to add just a little bit of blue fairly quick and easy to do and then of course we can't do what we did in the front with the back because we've got half an image here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recreate the remainder of this tree. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. So I'm gonna select the heel tab, the swoosh and the upper because those are all the areas that I want to be affected while I'm busy working. And I'm gonna select that green from that paint and I'm going to use the brush tool to just fill that area with the colors green that I imagine would be there if the image were complete. And then with some varying sizes, I'm just going to sort of mimic what I've seen in the top half of the image and just sort of do this little jagged effect. And that's quite effective. It doesn't look like much now, but trust me, when it's done, you're not even going to realize that it's been added to the image. So just finishing up there, I'm going to grab some black and I'm just going to use a really small thing. And by the way, this is all just using a mouse. I'm not using a pen or a stylus or anything like that. I'm just using a keyboard and mouse. And yeah, if you look at that, I mean, you wouldn't look at that twice. It looks just like the tree belongs there. I'd be very happy with that. Then the next step is I want to remove this worm. He's great, but he's only from a specific episode. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this side of the tree with my pen tool. Uh, I'm going to create, copy that to a new layer and I'm going to flip it horizontally so that I have got a new edge on the other side of the top of the tree. Uh, and then I'm just going to use the paint tool in the, the, that light green over there and I'm just going to paint right over him. I don't like you, worm. Uh, and then I'm going to use the pen tool to select this entire area and just cover him with blue. I don't want him there, so there we go. Just go grab some blue and pop him in there. And there we go. No more worms. Great, so on the whole, the image is looking really cool. I'm going to flatten these layers for now and I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. Multiply allows it to blend with the original layer so I can get the texture of the shoe and it looks really good in mock-ups. Now it's time for the second side. We're going to do the BMO side. We're going to pop BMO and we're going to follow pretty much the exact same process as before, but I think it's going to be a little bit simpler without these trees. I'm going to drop the opacity down so that I can just position BMO so he is optimal. What you want to do at this point is you want to avoid putting faces or eyes in that little hole between the, the swoosh and the upper. Uh, that's a that's some theory for another day, but basically I'm just going to make sure that it's blue on all the sides. I'm going to add a little bit of white, a white cloud here. I'm going to sort of try to mimic the style of these wispy clouds with a little bit of gray underneath. Like I said, it doesn't have to look perfect. It just sort of has to look like it generally fits with the theme. Uh, because this is something you're going to be copying when you are busy working on your design. Now just duplicate that and put it in the front. Uh, select all of the areas that I'm working on and just delete the inverse. Uh, and then yeah, just get the blend mode to multiply once again. There we go. And one more thing that I'd like to do, I'd like to select the color that I've been using and then create a darker edge to make a vignette. So that's basically just selecting the area and using a very soft brush tool effect in order to create sort of a shadow on either sides. I think that just makes it easier for the designs to blend from one side of the shoe to the other. 
And then I'll place both of these onto one canvas and then I will present that. I had to remove the audio from this because the office was really loud, but she was really happy with the design. Uh, a little bit confused until I revealed that BMO was part of the design and she was really, really stoked. Now keep in mind that while doing a sketch on a piece of paper might be a lot quicker. Well, I mean, a design like this probably took me round about an hour and a half to complete, which might be a lot of time if you're extremely pressed or in a very high pressure job. But I think that there's something quite professional, well-rounded and neat about creating a digital design. The trickiest part about all of this is of course, knowing exactly what you can and can't paint so that you don't accidentally overpromise in a mock-up. But that is just something that you learn with time. So as I showed Cheryl this final mock-up, I could tell that she was really, really stoked. You can even see the little BMO on her desk. <laughs> I really hope you found this video informative or somewhat helpful. If you would like me to go into the real nitty gritty of exactly like with the controls and everything of how I do what I do and all of the things that go into my head when creating a design like this or other designs. Let me know if you're interested in this kind of content in the comments down below and I will be sure to get to a video like that because I feel like a lot of art happens before the shoe even gets involved. And truly believe that where a good design shines is in the design process before it's put onto the shoe. But that's just the purest in me speaking and that's a topic for a whole nother day. If you're an art lover, a sneaker lover, or are just vaguely interested in the idea of customizing sneakers, consider subscribing and checking out some of the other videos that I have on the channel about how to customize sneakers, how to do surface preparation, what paints to use, how to remove the swoosh, and just a whole bunch of other things. Coming up pretty soon, I've got a video on how to create your own stencils without using a Cricut machine. And this is also I think going to be a really, really, really cool video for people who are getting into sneaker customizing, but don't want to outlay quite a significant cost. Stay tuned for that coming up soon. And thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.